Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about Lucas Kennard algorithm in order to find out the in order to track some points. We know about uh, Lucas Kennard uh, algorithm or in other words we call it a simple Kennard Lucas to Massey tracking algorithm. In this simple algorithm first of all we have to detect the Harris corners in the first frame. So, if we are given with a frame uh, with any image and this is the first frame of my image or my video, so we will find out the Harris corners of all the objects. For example, if there is a car, I will find out the Harris corners of that car. So, once I am done with finding the Harris corners of all the cars in this frame, then I will go on to the next step. The next step says that for each Harris corner, we have to compute the motion vectors these motion vectors can be translation vectors or they can be affine vectors between consecutive frames for example this is frame one of my video and this is frame two of my video so i will actually find out the motion vectors that how this uh, harris corner is going to move if this harris corner is lying over here in this frame number one then this Harris corner is lying on a different position in this frame too. So I will find a motion vector at this frame and I will find motion vector in the next frame. In this manner, I am going to com uh, compute the motion vectors in all the consecutive frames. So basically, what is this step? This step is known as alignment step because we are trying to align we are trying to align these frames we are trying trying to align the the same harris corner with the help of motion vectors for example we are trying to say that if this car was over here in this frame now uh, what is the position of that same car in the second frame so this uh, is called alignment in complete uh, lucas thomasy tracking algorithm this point of alignment is very important in my previous video i have already told you that how do we calculate harris corner so detecting harris corner is not a big deal for you you simply have to find the eigenvalues and the point where the eigenvalues are uh, not very small they are large in value and they are not very much one eigenvalue is not very much larger than other both are large uh, then we say that that point is a corner so in this way you find out corners by finding the eigenvalues but the real thing in this tracking algorithm is this uh, finding these motion vectors and uh, finding alignment of the detected uh, Harris corners with the help of motion vectors so I am going to elaborate on this point first let me complete the steps okay once you are done with finding the motion vector then the third step in Harris um, in this algorithm is that we link the motion vectors in successive frames to get the tracks for each point so now you have already calculated these motion vectors in the consecutive frames so now you are going to place them one over another and you will link them so when you link these motion vectors you will actually get the tracks that okay this this was the car inside the bounding box and it is moving over here over here and then it is moving downwards so when you link these motion vectors which you have computed in the last step then you are going to get the tracks so you can see that vector for point one your harris point one are linked to uh, form one track similarly if there is for example say some other car over there so you will associate or you will compute the motion vectors in the consecutive frames for that car as well and you will get another track so that is how you uh, compute motion vectors for multiple objects but right now i have given you an example of a single object in in the in these frames okay so once you have done linking the motion vectors then the next step step comes that says that you have to introduce new harris points so you have already got the track for this harris point now you will start looking for other harris points that do we have for example 
if i want to uh, validate uh, this movement i can make uh, harris corner on this corner of this car or this bounding box so when i pick this corner i can uh, compute the motion vector in all the consecutive frames for this second corner and once i will compute the motion vector for the second corner then i will of course uh, track that new harris corner as well so in this point you are being said that introduce new harris points after m m means after every 10 to 15 frames you have to introduce new harris points by applying the harris detector so now you will have new harris points then you will track new and old harris points and you keep repeating this cycle after every 10 to 15 frames so this is the overall flow of the simple Canade lucas Thomasy tracking. Now we will elaborate upon alignment point. So basically what is alignment? Alignment is actually computing the motion vector. So when we want to compute the motion vector, first of all we, uh, we say that we are given with a template which is T of X, the template of the image. Alright, and what we want? we want to find out p what is p p is basically the parameters that are changing when we are what when we are trying to uh, compute the motion vector between the conductive frames when we are seeing when we are watching the harris corner how it's moving between frame to frame and we are computing its motion vectors between frame to frames so in this situation we assume we first of all warp the image with the initial estimate if our initial estimate is w x of p what is w x of p w x of p says that this is a function that defines uh, that defines that it is defined in parameters p it is defined in parameter p all right so we are warping the image with initial estimate for example, this is my image, so I am uh, estimating it, warp means estimate, I am estimating the image uh, with that uh, warp, I am warping that image, I am limiting that image to that estimated, okay, I am looking onto that part of the image right now, okay, limiting myself. Then I will subtract from the template, so this is my warped image. So I will subtract the template out of it. You already have the concept of template matching. When you match something with the template, you are actually trying to find out some features. If your matching is good, you say that, yes, I have found these features. If your matching is bad, you say that, no, this is a different image. That one is a different image. So right now you are doing the same thing. You have taken a template because you were given with the template t of x and you have subtracted that template from that warped image and this value which comes through subtraction this is called error so here you can see that you had the image you warped the image and in the second step you used a template so when you do subtraction between the template you can see that this step 2 is going down here so you are getting an error which is actually this or uh, warped image minus your template okay so now what are we going to do with the error okay so in the third step we are going to calculate the gradient of our template remember we are not calculating the gradient of the image or the warped image we are calculating the gradient of the template so you can see in the third point i have taken i have calculated two gradients of the template this is gradient along x-axis and this is gradient along y-axis. So I have gotten two gradients of the template. Alright, in the fourth step we will evaluate the Jacobian. So you have an idea of Jacobian. Jacobian is a matrix in which we contain all the partial derivatives which can belong to all the functions that are existing inside that bigger function. So if you say that w is my uh, w is my function that is warping my image, so all types of functions that are present in the image. For example, I have 
uh, done some translation to my image i have moved my image my car for example from one place to an other so there will be a translation function lying inside my image for example if i have also rotated my image so there will be a rotation function lying inside my image so when I calculate the Jacobian, I will do I will find out the partial derivatives with respect to x for the translation function. I will do the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Of course, whatever are the parameters, if they are x, y, then I will do the partial derivatives with respect to x, y. If they are, uh, if the parameters are something else like p1, p2 then i will find the partial derivatives with respect to those parameters so jacobian is basically a big matrix all right so i have got the gradients of the template and i have got the um, the jacobian matrix for delta w over delta p and this is of course the image right then i will multiply the jacobian with the gradient so this delta t will be multiplied with this jacobian matrix so we are having a matrix that is my uh, these are gradients and gradients are being multiplied with the jacobian matrix afterwards we will compute the inverse hesian matrix the inverse hesian matrix is very important in this lucas canade thomas method thomasi method because you can see that here we have multiplied these elements and right now we are calculating the hesian inverse if this is the hesian this is the hesian inverse afterwards we will multiply with error so this was my error which we computed in the step number two so i'm taking it down and i'm multiplying this error with this multiply multiplied product i have taken a transpose of this delta t partial derivative of w with respect to delta p which was actually the jacobian matrix so i have taken a transpose of it and i am doing this multiplication with the error and for this i am doing a summation along x axis that all the components all the components of this window whatever window i am taking and along x axis whatever elements are present inside it i am going to do a summation so this is a multiplication um, um, you had this hesian this inverse hesian and you had that multiplication between this product transpose and between this error which is coming from this side so one element is coming from this side one element is coming from this side so both of them are being multiplied here and now with the help of this multiplication we are going to compute delta p delta p was the real thing because we are actually trying out to do the alignment so we want to know how much they are misaligned so once we know how much uh, both frames or both harris corners are misaligned only then we can actually align them so this delta p is equal to the hesian inverse matrix multiplied by the rest of the product so we have rest of the product here and we have this inverse hesian lying over here so when both of these things are actually multiplied then we get delta p and when we get delta p then we can actually update the parameters we can find out the alignment we can find out okay how much is the misalignment i'm going to add that uh, value of delta p into my original previous p and I, I will get the p so the parameter update will only happen when you add this delta p in the previous p and in this way whatever you get you can use it again to warp the image you again have the estimate of the image you again have that w x p which is defined in parameter p p defines the alignment so when you add this delta p that difference that misalignment then you actually are able to update your parameters so in this way your entire alignment step of your 
Lucas Canade algorithm works and if I again come on to the overall main algorithm so we have detected the Harris corners for each Harris corner we just explain how do we compute the motion vectors whether they are translation motions or they are affine motions between consecutive frames so right now we have done the alignment between alignment for each Harris corner we have aligned into between the consecutive frames how this Harris corner is moving what is the motion so we have found out we have computed the motion vector with the help of finding alignment so that delta that finding out that delta p is actually uh, computing your motion vector so once motion vectors have been computed you link the motion vectors in successive frames this linking actually generates your tracks so once you have linked the all the Harris uh, all the motion vectors and you have got all the frames then you will introduce new Harris points and when will you introduce new Harris points we will introduce new Harris points after every 10 to 15 frames and then we will start tracking the new Harris points and the old Harris points so now we have got uh, more number of Harris corners so we of course need to compute more motion vectors so when we need to compute more motion vectors it means we again have to find out delta p and then we will link the motion vectors and this is what we call tracking so this is how the simple Kennedy lucas thomasy tracking works i hope you like the video do like and subscribe and you can write your questions in the comments section allah